Here you go. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to talk to you about, about the land of red clay. And uh, the land of red clay basically is, uh, um, this, is really, this is really all about Africa. Uh, right now I'm specifically talking about Cameroon. And um, I'm going to be talking about some of the pains uh, that we go through um, uh, regarding accessing the internet and how this affects us uh, as a country. Um, I'm going to start with a very simple story because before, before I really get into some of the details, I, I need to put you all in the mindset of, um, of an individual trying to access the internet in Cameroon. And so you have uh, the average Cameroonian citizen. Uh, he's earning about $2,000 $2, a year. That's GDP per capita. Um, it's about a million francs. And he walks, into, uh, he, he, he walks up to an ISP. And he says, hey, you know, he's like, you know, this is, this is kind of my budget. And I'd like to know how much it costs me to access the internet, you know, all year round. And the ISP says, well, you know, that's going to cost, you know, that's going to cost a third of your entire year's budget. Now, th that's just $2,000, you know. Uh, globally, that's, 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 that's pretty poor. But in, in Cameroon, if you're earning that, you're just, you're just surviving. However, if you're trying to, if you're trying to access the internet all year round at, at that cost, you are not going to be surviving. So it's not um, at all a sustainable solution. Um, and we, we see through this, you know, it's it's hard to, it, it's it's hard for for, inno for for innovation to be appreciated, you know, if you can't actually access uh, internet innovation, if you can't actually access the internet, if you can't actually access those services, um, you know, that can facilitate your life, make your life easier. It's hard for that to be appreciated. And um, basically, the solution is that people tend to share internet connections. I'm trying to point out that that connection, which is costing you a third of your salary, is actually just 256 kilobytes per second. It's not dedicated. Um, it's extremely faulty, extremely unreliable. And um, that's just a bad situation for anybody. I want to go into a few, into a few statistics here. Um, in Cameroon, basically what, what what powers our internet is a SAT3, SAT3 submarine cable. And I'm doing, I'm doing a comparison here between Cameroon and Gabon. So in Cameroon, for an ISP uh, to, to, to rent bandwidth per, per month, it costs $2,363 for me to do that. In Gabon, which is accessing the same SAT3 cable, it costs $295. Uh, and you can see the bandwidth. The bandwidth in Cameroon, you're, you're, each individual is having about 13 bits per second, as opposed to Cabon, where the individual is having, <laughs> individual is having 200 bits per second. And again, I'm just pointing out statistics that in Cameroon, you'll find, in, in, in 100 people, you'll find five of them who actually use the internet. In Gabon, 13. Now, a very important question here is why? Why is, you know, why is Gabon able to provide a better connection, you know, at about 12.5% of the price uh, that Cameroon is. And I'm leading to that. So I'll go back again to our story, to our young Cameroonian citizen who was talking to the ISP. Now he says, you know, I couldn't afford that internet connection. It was, it was way too expensive. And so what I did is I teamed up with five of my buddies. And, uh, you know, we've got that GDP per capita, we've got that multiplied by six. We know we'd like to take a better internet connection because the first option we took is, is really bad, so we want to double up. The ISP says, you know, that's, that's great. We, we feel your pain. It's still going to cost you one-third of your salary. And that makes no sense. You know, you are doubling up. Uh, internet connection, you're, you're paying 256 kV. That costs you, I'm going to say it in francs. 30,000 francs a month, 30,000 francs a month. If you wanted to double up, what should that cost you? And I want an answer from the audience. What should that cost you? Double, max. It should cost you double max. But in Cameroon, from one option to the next, the ISPs, they're marking up the prices by as much as 700%. 700%. And again, I know the question is, why? And I'm leading up to that, but you see, in this kind of environment, it is extremely difficult for an average individual to actually 
benefit from the services that are on the internet. And this is a problem that we face, you know, we face daily working out of, a, out of a technology incubator. And you know, the general solution is to thank goodness that you have some kind of internet connection anyways. So <clears throat> there are two regulatory authorities for internet in Cameroon. There's the Telecommunications Regulation Authority. It says ART because that would be in French, Agence Regulatoire de Telecommunication, and the National Agency for uh, Information Technologies and Communication, which is connected to the cabinet of the presidency. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it, was, it was established uh, in 1998, 1998 by the Telecommunications Act, and since then, not a lot of legislation has, uh, has been enacted further. And you know, the, the landscape just remains unclear. Now there are some pundits and uh, industry professionals who think that uh, you know, the policies need to be updated. And, um, and I agree, you know. I think after 15 years you know, of these two agencies operating, you know, uh, using taxpayers' money, there should be some uh, kind of update in the policies. I think the people working there should actually be doing something, uh, which they're not. And I, I, we also think the, you know, the independence of these two agencies, it needs to be, you know, it needs to be ensured. Being connected to the cabinet of the presidency isn't, isn't working out at all. Now, <clears throat> before I continue, I just, uh, you know, I, I want to lay it out plainly what I've been trying to say uh, all along about uh, the situation in Cameroon. If we're, if we're looking at policies, um, you know, hearing some of the other stories, you know, the policies they, they affect the citizens in terms of uh, in terms of privacy, you know, in, in terms of in terms of surveillance. You know, in Cameroon that's not at all the case, really. You know, we don't we don't actually worry about privacy or, or surveillance or any or anything like that because, you know, we don't. Not a lot of people are actually using the internet. Um, you know, actually, laws laws have been passed. Laws have been passed, which actually, uh, you know, infringe, you know, on the on the freedoms of the people to communicate um, uh, on the internet in privacy. But the real problem that I'm trying to point out is simply, it's simply corruption. It's simply corruption. It's because uh, our government, being one of the most uh, corrupt states in Africa, is is putting a noose. It's putting a bottleneck. <laughs> You know, on the capabil uh, capabilities of the internet to impact the people's life, and the reason is just that they're making uh, too much money. You know, doing other rights. Um, there are lots of uh, there 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 are several several corruption schemes that are, that the government's running. If if you're going to be attending the uh, international summit for community wireless networks, we'll be talking about that more. Um, but the message I'm trying to get across is that simply, it is too difficult right now as it stands for an average Cameroonian to access stable, um, quality internet connection. So what, we, what we've decided to do as a community of entrepreneurs in Cameroon is to, uh, is to address this, and we want to address this through community wireless networks. Um, and we're comparing the two. You know, the internet access we know is expensive in Cameroon. Community wireless networks are relatively very cheap. Um, we know internet access has, it's very poor quality. Uh, community wireless networks can give you excellent quality. Um, again, internet access is, we have limited coverage. Uh, there are only certain places in Cameroon where you actually have um, internet, internet coverage. And you know, community wireless networks can be, can be targeted. Specific regions can be targeted. And um, on the upside, internet access, you know, you get, you, you get access to global data. Whereas with community wireless networks, uh, the way we're looking at it, you know, you get access to, to streamlined data. Um, but we think right now, as it stands, that internet access, it, it's, it's ideal, but it's not, it's not pragmatic in Cameroon, and it's not the, it's, 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 not the um, it's not the solution that the people actually need right now. What the people need right now in Cameroon is just access to the information that they're getting off the internet itself. That's what they need. They need that information to, uh, to empower them uh, and, and to help them, uh, you know, to help them develop their, their various situations. So I'm going to go into a couple of ideas that, that are addressing this to further explain what I'm, what I'm trying to get across. 
Ooh. There is something wrong there. It's supposed to be a screenshot of a... Give me one second. <laughs> Anyways, we developed a project called, uh, called DataZone. And DataZone basically is a virtual library for university campuses that gives university students access to, um, you know, to, to journals, uh, to, to video lectures. So I'm just gonna improvise very quickly. This is a slide you should be looking at. And that's basically a screenshot of, uh, of DataZone. It gives you, it gives you, it gives a student access to, you know, to digital books, to, uh, to video lectures, um, uh, to all sorts of educational material. And what we did when we set up DataZone is that uh, we wrote to MIT uh, OpenCourseWare and we told them, well, you know, we're setting up this, this digital library and we need, you know, we need content on it. That's all we need. You know, we, we need this content. We can put this on a local server. Uh, we, can, we can make this accessible over a local area network. <laughs> Students can connect to that and they can get their information that they need to, uh, to support their education. And MIT OpenCourseWare said, sure, you know, and they sent, out, sent us out a one terabyte hard disk, you know, full of their OpenCourseWare material, which the students can now access, they can now benefit from without having to go through the, without having to access the internet. You know, and that's, that's basically the, the innovation, that's, that's the solution. You know, you get the information that the students need, streamlined, they don't have to, they don't have to search for that. It's, it's exactly what's there on the server, and they can access that content. And, um, and, uh, and enhance their education. So going back to the presentation. Now, a little while after this, one of the entrepreneurs in our community, he developed uh, a software called Theme. And Theme is basically, um, it, it's, it's a file sharing application. That's, uh, it's, it's, it's on Android, it's on the iPhone, it's, uh, it's on Windows, the iOS. Um, what he's done basically is he's made it very easy and fast to share files, you know, over a local area network. And actually, uh, in the recent months, most of his, uh, most of his, uh, his clients, because he's selling this, uh, um, he's selling this on the, on, on the Android market, most of his clients are coming from Germany. Has anybody ever heard of him here? No? Well, yeah, he has a, a lot of clients coming from Germany, from the U.S., from Asia. Um, because he has done a great job in load, ba load balancing, he makes it extremely, extremely easy for you to share files, for you to send a file from your phone to your computer, computer to your phone. And it's also possible to do a local area, uh, a, a LAN chat on this application. Basically, you can, you can IM with your friends over this application. This is something that we want to take now and implement on our community wireless network so that everybody in the region who's, uh, who has access to that network can basically communicate for free. And uh, he is, uh, he's also developing, he's trying to develop a voice over IP um, uh, feature for the application so that you could actually call your friends over a local area network, not have to pass through um, the mobile network operators. We also have a duopoly of mobile network operators in Cameroon, which keeps the prices very high. And um, this is another innovation that we feel can uh, facilitate communication in Cameroon over a, community, over a community wireless network. And finally, uh, what we're trying to do now is we're trying to, we're trying to develop a community wireless network data portal, which kind of incorporates um, all these aspects, you know, data zone, theme, and other, other services. This is what we're calling Red Clay Wireless. Um, you know, when we think of community wireless networks, we just, we're, we're, we're thinking of, we're thinking of the internet as it exists right now, but on a community wireless network. You know, we're thinking of having information available, um, you know, emails, uh, uh, instant messaging, um, chat forums, entertainment, you know, television, radio, news feeds, um, uh, location-based services. We're thinking of having all that available on a community wireless network so that you know, people in that community can access that information, that information that can empower them, you know, without, it's, without having to go through the whole battle of, you know, can I afford internet uh, connection or not? Um, if I get a laptop, if I 
manage to get the funds that I need to get a laptop, is that actually going to be of use to me? Because I want a laptop so I can access the internet. I can access some data source, get information, use that data, and develop my life. You know, but with this situation being as it is right now in Cameroon, that's extremely, extremely difficult. And um, you find that so many sponsors, students going to school, their parents don't want to sponsor a laptop because they don't see the value in that. We want to, you know, we want to optimize the, the value of these, of these internet connection tools like laptops, like mobile phones. We want to do that through a, a community wireless network. And we want to leverage, you know, third party developers to, you know, be, be, this is a task we can't take on by ourselves. We can't, we can't develop all these features ourselves. But if we had a community wireless network, and we had a force of third-party developers, you know, who could develop apps for that network. Then we can then get the community engaged um, on Red Clay Wireless, you know, and really have uh, really have um, a, a large, you know, a large database of applications for for our community to benefit from, without having to worry about um, the the stress that the government is giving them. So. Thank you very much. Uh, There's more about what we're doing on activespaces.com. And uh, those are links which you can use to, uh, to follow us, uh, join us on Facebook, and uh, find out more about what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Other questions? I'll come to you. Uh, you talked about uh, lots of wireless stuff, which is uh, for me is cool because in Burnham we have this Freifunk, and there's also some people had the idea to put files up, like you put uh, all the MIT files into this uh, mesh network, which is quite cool. And I wanted to ask, how was it? Uh, because I think it's quite. Uh, big amount of money to buy a laptop or a smartphone or something. And I think it's cool for also younger generations to have access uh, via normal computer. Uh, how is it uh, with Raspberry Pi or something? Uh, do you use it to get access to people because it's quite cheap? So you're asking specifically about Raspberry Pi? Well, no, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, there are lots of people have shown a lot of interest in Raspberry Pi, but it hasn't actually reached uh, Cameroon yet. It's not, it's, uh, you know, I think that I've seen a couple individuals who want a Raspberry Pi, but it's not really in our market yet. You know, that is something that if, if it came in, it could be of a, of a huge benefit to the country, but uh, it's, it's not there right now. But usually not, now it's based on smartphones and uh, laptops and stuff. Pardon? Uh, now it's, uh, the access that people have is on uh, smartphones and yeah, laptops. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, smartphones and laptops that, that have, you know, that, that, that can connect to a to wireless connection, to a Wi-Fi. That's where the access comes from. And they can also be feature phones with internet functions, right? Not everybody would have a smartphone, but like the in-between things that we had once. Um, they, they, they could be the in-between things. Basically, the most important Part of it is that uh, your your device should be able to uh, sh should have Wi-Fi. If your device has Wi-Fi, you know you you can access those services. You can access um, you can access Data Zone. Uh, you you can't use Theme. You have to have a you know an Android or an iOS to use Theme. Um, but hopefully he's going to be extending that platform soon. Are there further questions? So Al is going to be presenting again and talking about this in more detail on Friday. Afternoon at 2 p.m. as a part of the wireless summit, and I think you did a great job, especially we've flown in this morning. It's been a long day, so thank you very much for your talk.